Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Padri. Congratulations for the launch of the Digital Tsunami, your new book on digital transformation coaching. Would you want to highlight what is the book all about and how can we as professionals leverage on the teachings you've given in the book? Uh, thank you very much. Actually, the uh, book, The Digital Tsunami, is really uh, a way to understand in a simplified manner what is actually changing in the world uh, as a result of the technology. And, you know, I think the biggest myth about the digital transformation is that it is about technology and it isn't. It's really about putting the human being at the center. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's the employee, whether it is the customer, putting the, them in the center and building your processes in and around it. And the journey from an analog kind of a mindset, you know, where you look at the world in a very different way, uh, because the digital world is actually going to look at a very different kind of a format. So how do we get people to work in this new world order which is emerging? So that's what the book is about and you know, hopefully uh, it will be a simple way. There are lots of sketches and all that in the book and it sort of is going to be, a, you know, so these kind of sketches are there. And these capture not only summaries of what has happened, but you know, it also explains uh, what is uh, the change. So you know, for example, here we've talked about transformation and not the word change management. Traditionally, we have said change management. The difference between the two is that transformation is all the variables change together at an exponential rate, and therefore the leaders don't make the rules. It's the incumbents do not make the rules. In an analog world, the leaders make the rules. In the digital world, it's the startups, it's the smaller players, it's the people who don't have any baggage. They are the ones who are making the rules. So that is the uh, shift. Awesome. Um, when is this book available and where is it available that we can buy from? So it is going to be available. We are launching it tomorrow afternoon. And it's going to be, it's already available on Kindle. And it's also available uh, in the bookstores uh, from uh, you know, the 1st of October, it'll be available in bookstores. And then progressively we'll see uh, it being available in every city as well. Sure. Um, you said uh, digital transformation is not all about technology, it is beyond that as well. But I'd like to focus on how it is affecting the tech world and how is it affecting hires like you at Wipro? Uh, well, <laughs> I'm no longer with Bipro. Uh, I am actually going to talk about the fact that what do I see across sectors, you sure. know, in terms sure. of a hiring shape. Sure. I think the, you know, one of the changes that's happening is that, um, you know, earlier we used mm. to have a three-stage model. People uh, get their education, they start working in, uh, uh, you know, they start working somewhere sure. and then they retire. Now, what is actually happening is... Yeah, please. What is actually happening is that uh, people are actually living longer. You know, longevity is increased because of better nutrition, better awareness and everything. And along with that, the lifespan of companies has actually become smaller. So what is going to happen is educational degrees and educational certifications are no longer going to be sufficient to see you through for your entire career. Mm -hmm. So people will periodically, after every few years, will have to disengage learn new set of skills and come back into the workforce and potentially have many different uh, a portfolio of jobs, a portfolio of skills. Mm -hmm. So the model in future is probably going to be different instead of you know us working in one industry uh, and, and then maybe shifting between different companies. It's probably going to be you know working across different kinds of sectors and doing many different kinds of jobs. So that is going to be a very fundamental shift. Sure. Um, you said you've just moved on from Wipro. Uh, can we please check what is your next destination like and how is it going to impact the hiring patterns across in the industry? So, um, um, you know, what I want to do now is to actually work uh, with different kinds of organizations. So I'm running my own boutique consulting work. I'll continue to, you know, be a uh, leadership advisor uh, to Wipro. Uh, that will continue. But along with that, I'll also be working with uh, companies and leaders across industries 
to help them craft their new agenda for a world which is going to change because of the digital shift. So if you're looking at the way this hiring processes are going to change, you, you know, people are probably going to look for uh, skilling up the people far more earlier. Uh, you know, not just wait for them to join a job and then start skilling them. It's probably going to start more at the campus, you know, early days. I mean, and, and so the hiring process is going to go through um, the, the employer and the student, engaging while the student is still in the campus, giving them assignments, apprenticeships, and doing all that to really make a hiring decision, not just through a one-off interview, but through a prolonged engagement process. So those kind of things will happen. The other thing is that, um, you know, in the digital space, the future does not look anything like the past. So therefore, you know, previous experiences, previous certifications are of less importance. The ability to learn uh, what you don't know, you know, learn from other people, learn on your own. And those are the kind of things that are going to become very important. Collaboration is going to become very important. Or people who have uh, creative problem solving abilities are going to become very important in the job market. So more and more employers are going to look for skills in that space. Sure. Uh, coming to the uh, tech skills, what are the key tech skills that will gain momentum in the digital transformation era? And do we really have uh, enough talent in those skills required in the digital transformation age? <coughs> I think um, a lot of the technology itself is rapidly evolving. So it is an unfolding scenario. So there are, you know, people have different kinds of uh, interests and experiences. So if you look at all the things that are happening, whether it's virtual reality, augmented reality, chatbots, you know, robotics, artificial intelligence, all of this is actually coming together simultaneously. So it's creating a very interesting set of possibilities. More and more, I think, you know, what is going to happen is people will start working with these technologies on their own. Yes, some organizations will provide those canvases as well. But I think the real shift is that the, it is not going to be about the employer providing that shift, but it's about the individuals who are actually going to work um, on their own to pick up these skills and become, uh, you know, marketable. Sure. Some key tech domains where digital transformation is really happening and where there is a demand every for... Every domain, every sector is going to get transformed because of the digital technology. Business models will change, employment models will change, uh, you know, employee uh, equations will change. So I think this whole notion of, uh, because the changes are going to be so rapid, it's going to become increasingly difficult for organizations to predict the way talent movements are going to happen. So therefore, flexibility, uh, flexibility in talent models is probably something that we'll see more and more of in the future. Sure. One last question, sir. How, what are your tips for the hires uh, hiring tech talent in the digital transformation way? I think one of the uh, big pieces to look for is the ability to learn. I mean, whether tech jobs or non-tech jobs, the ability to hire, uh, you know, must focus on um, the person's ability to learn. You know, what can the person learn on their own? Because no matter what the person knows today, in a very short span it will become obsolete. You know, today the half-life of most degrees is about three years. So how do we create something which is uh, going to be, you know, future-proof? And that depends on whether the person can work on their own and uh, learn on their own and also work with other people. Because most problems are becoming more complex so that it's a transdisciplinary view. So how do you get a transdisciplinary perspective? Can people work with uh, in a very inclusive environment? So those kind of factors will become far more important than the technical skill, which will have a very short shelf life. So I think it's going to be these two things happening in parallel. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Bhattacharya. Thank, Thank you. you very much for having me.